This is Geo Techland, and today I'm going to be talking about Endeavor OS, which is an Arch based Linux distro. But unlike Arch, where you have to build it completely from the ground up using the command line, that's really more for advanced users. This one makes it a lot easier to install as a graphical user interface. And so you can get the benefits of Arch with its leading edge apps and kernel without needing to know how to install Arch by yourself here. Here, I'm gonna actually show you the installation process because that is actually a big part of installing Endeavor OS. It's what makes it truly unique. One of the first options you'll see is an option to choose online or offline mode. And it is recommended to choose online mode so that you can actually choose your desktop environment and kind of give you more options. Otherwise, if you install the offline version, you're only going to get the standard XFCE desktop by default. I mean, unless you know you want that, then I guess you could choose offline mode. Otherwise, this installation process is pretty standard. You know, you have the location, keyboard, partitions. But what makes Endeavor OS unique is that it also has a desktop desktop menu here where you can actually choose exactly which desktop environments to install. By default, it's selecting the base and sort of common packages and it's recommending to not change anything unless you know what you're doing. So again, this is definitely geared towards more intermediate users, I would say. Here I'm going to install the GNOME desktop and if I click this little drop down arrow, I can actually even customize installing the GNOME desktop itself. And of course, there's also options for if you want to install printing applications. For me personally, I probably wouldn't need any of these other additional apps. So it's nice that we can just choose not to install them and not sort of uh, clog down our distro here. So here's some options for the base if you wanted to take a look at that as well. But anyways, uh, once we proceed with the installation, since it is installing in online mode, I noticed it did take a good while for this to install, a little bit longer than usual. And once you've installed and restarted, you'll see this sort of welcome menu, which you can choose not to remember. I don't know if I was supposed to choose something in particular, but I, I kind of just checked GNOME, checked the Endeavor base as you saw. But one thing that I noticed is that there appears not to be any app store. You know, there's no GNOME software center by default and there's no sort of a app that you can click on to install new apps. It seems like it's going to make you do that all through the command line, unless I'm mistaken. But as far as I can see, I didn't see anything like that. So again, if you're a new user coming to Linux, I probably wouldn't recommend this because you kind of want to just be able to open up an app store and install apps. And it doesn't seem like you really have that here. I'm not sure why I didn't install the GNOME Software Center, but I had to go ahead and install that manually. And I also had to install the full sort of GNOME software package. Otherwise, if I installed it, it didn't come with like the plugins needed. And then of course, I also had to install Flatpak. But once I've installed that and then I restarted, it looks like everything was coming up fine with the GNOME Software Center. It seems like it was getting the feed from Flatpaks and loading this sort of uh, app store and new app. And then now it does seem to be a bit more integrated to the OS here with the plugins. And of course, here's a NeoFetch. So by default, you'll get the latest kernel or the latest stable kernel 5.14. So again, you're getting that bleeding edge experience. You're getting the latest stable version of GNOME, GNOME 40.5. So if you were to ask yourself, who is Endeavor OS for? I would say it is for someone that wants bleeding edge in terms of Mesa drivers and the kernel. Maybe if you have a newer GPU that might need or rely on the later kernels. If you're geared towards gaming, this would be a good OS, but I still wouldn't recommend it if you're an average user, unless you're an average user that's willing to tweak around and learn a little bit about installing certain apps using the terminal. And just for anyone that wanted to try out Arch without actually installing the main default arch and kind of going through all that process by yourself, then this would be a good OS for you. But let me know your thoughts. Who would you recommend in deeper OS for? Would you recommend it to more advanced users, an average user coming to Linux? Maybe someone that wants to focus on gaming? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. If you're enjoying my video, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, follow me on Odyssey. You could also support me on LibraPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below.